Good evening. I'd like to call the meeting to order. This is a Bella Vista City Council work session for September 18, 2023. First item on the agenda is a mayor's proclamation for Constitution Week, September 17 to 23. I'd like to have uh, Jody Rogers and Sue Lynn Hansen come up. And I'm going to read that proclamation uh, from the microphone, and then we'll have a uh, photo op. Proclamation Constitution Week 2023. Whereas the Constitution of the United States of America, the guardian of our liberties, embodies the principles of limited government in a republic dedicated to rule by law, and whereas September 17, 2023 marks the 236th anniversary of the framing of the Constitution of the United States of America by the Constitutional Convention, and whereas it is fitting and proper to accord official recognition to this magnificent document and its memorable anniversary and to the patriotic celebrations which will commemorate it, 
And whereas Public Law 915 guarantees the issuing of a proclamation each year by the President of the United States of America designating September 17 through 23 as Constitution Week. Now therefore, I, John D. Flynn, by virtue of the authority vested in me as Mayor of the City of Bella Vista, do hereby proclaim the week of September 17 to 23 as Constitution Week and ask our citizens to reaffirm the ideals the framers of the Constitution had in 1787 by vigilantly protecting the freedoms guaranteed to us through this guardian of our liberties. Witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused to be affixed a great seal of the city of Bella Vista, Arkansas on this 18th day of September in the year of our Lord, 2023. And uh, these ladies are with uh, the DAR and they're uh, representing the DAR of Bella Vista. Thank you. Uh, the DAR is involved with uh, Cooper Elementary of having uh, some education having to do with the Constitution. And they have given me Constitution bookmarks for all the council members. So pass those down. I'll pass them down this way. Here we go. Uh, next item on the agenda is a review of the minutes. So I'd ask the members of council to be sure to look over the minutes and uh, have any, if there's any comments tonight or you can make them next week at the meeting. Okay, next item is old business and ordinance amending section 107-249 subdivision design standards of the code of ordinances of the city of Bella Vista to require underground placement of utilities in all new residential, commercial, and industrial developments and for other purposes. This is the second reading, and I did want to comment to uh, the council members. Uh, Carol Electric reached out to me, and they did want a minor amendment to it. It called for one poll and they wanted to be able to have two poles. Their thinking was to have one on either end of the development, and that way if the power goes out somewhere in the middle, they can have power come in from one direction or another to have as least an outage as possible. So that's an amendment that we'd like to implement next week if you're so inclined. Was that the only comment that they had regarding the ordinance? in general? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they spoke with the Planning Commission and generally were uh, favorable to it. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, as I recall, the way it reads now, it says two poles. But I think it, we should segregate that uh, so that you can have one pole on the service on the feed end and one on the other end. Sorry about that. No, I mean, the, the, the proposal I thought it. I so thought I read this too. Did I misread that? In, in the proposal that's on second reading, it says, um, and this is on page 11 of 79, a sing, uh, the very last sentence, a single wow. power pole near the exterior boundary of a development shall be allowed to provide connections for underground service. And then there is, uh, there's a copy of the full ordinance section in there for your reference. And then there is a proposed amendment, which the mayor is going to want to ask someone to move to introduce that in the very last sentence, it says up to two power poles near the exterior boundary of a development shall be allowed to provide connections okay. for underground service. So that's on an amendment. It was the we'll amendment need to make. 
So do we make? No. Okay. And this is not. This yeah. is work okay. session. Okay. So I, I just want to clarify. Yeah. So at okay. next week's meeting, if some, right. if we want to do that, then someone will need to move that amendment. Okay. So, so if the concept was for a poll at the front end where the service comes in and a poll at the back end where they could back feed the system or, or extend it out, then we might want to rewrite that last sentence in a different fashion. Otherwise, they would allow for two polls coming in, and you may not want that. If you follow what I'm saying, the way it's written now. I would follow the advice of the electric company. I mean, that's, I don't. Well, I, I don't object to the two polls, but I think their, their request was one on the front and one on the back so they can feed it from two directions. Okay. Or they can take it out on the back end. Uh, so my thought would be is we may want to rephrase that a little bit. Okay. Okay. The next ordinance is Ordinance B, amending the Bella Vista Zoning Ordinance and map the rezone property described in rezoning petition number 2023-50265, county parcel number 16-20950-001 from R2, two-family residential district to C1, neighborhood commercial district, and I believe this is in the Medfield Recreation Area. Uh, Doug McCash, you want to say a few words? I'm a soft-spoken individual anyway, but that was pretty pretty light. <laughs> uh, any questions, I'd be happy to answer on behalf of the POA. So the idea is really to rezone that whole piece of land that you use for the Metfield Park area to have the same zone. That's correct, yeah. That, that's a dedicated parking lot for that area that was rezoned C1 a couple of months ago, so we're trying to make it consistent. Okay. Yeah. This park, of course, this is a pretty popular park, the only park in the area. A lot of people use it. Uh, it's, it's busy constantly, and of course, the redesigning has brought up some concern as to what the future might uh, be for that park, what the future development issue might be for that park, which I think the, the planning document states at the bottom that it um, can be used for a, a any kind of commercial development, really. Mm -hmm. And of course, as I said, that concerns for people in that area, and especially the people that use that park on it quite a, uh, often. Um, I know that's been stated in the past that the uh, um, POA couldn't sell the property without a vote of the public, or without a vote of the membership. But what about leasing the property? Um. We also wouldn't, wouldn't, don't have any interest in leasing the property or selling the property. Um, as has been stated in, on other parcels, we're just trying to make it consistent with its uh, current and historical uses. Um, we're not, there's no plans to develop anything there. Um, you know, R2 is just really inconsistent with the use that it's currently had and the intended use in the future as well. I totally, totally agree that it's not an R2 area, but what about the, um, the lease to the uh, American Legion for part of the Metfield uh, golf cart trailer parking area? So we were proposing a license agreement, which is different than a lease. Um, so I, I guess there's no contemplation of doing such a thing right now, but I, you know, that is a possibility. I wouldn't rule that out. So what would keep a, a licensing agreement from um, uh, happening with this particular property then? Well, it would have to be some kind of proposal put together that would go before the board of the POA. Uh, and the board would have to discuss such a proposal and decide if that was, you know, a, a use that would be appropriate for the POA's um, functions. Um, you know, kind of thinking, thinking down the road in the future of things that aren't on the table at this point, though. Yeah. I, who knows what the what the future needs might be, but, okay. Anything else? 
Uh, Doug, I just thought I'd mention an unrelated matter, that other matter that the POA appealed. We got it so close to the meeting that it's going to be next month. Okay, so. very good. Thank you for the information. Okay, next item is C, amending the Bella Vista zoning ordinance and map to rezone property described herein, county parcel number 16-70185-000 from R1 residential single family district to P1 conservation district. This is part of the new Trail Ridge uh, subdivision. I think that was this was brought forward by the city. Uh, Taylor, did you want to say something about this? So this was a staff initiated um, zoning map amendment. So as standard with all of our other common property here in Bella Vista, um, instead of leaving it as R1 single family, um, we wanted to rezone that to be more compatible with the other areas of um, our common property and city limits and zone that to P1 conservation to help preserve that natural area. And typically with like steep topography or floodplains and things like that, our zoning code really wants that in P1. So this really was just um, trying to make it as it is throughout the other um, areas of the city of Bella Vista, um, basically to keep that natural area natural um, and put it as P1 conservation. There is a trail that goes through Common Property B, and I believe it's tunnel vision that goes through there. Um, and then there's also steep topography through Common Property A. So. Again, just common practice, we're here requesting to amend it if you want. Um, just, I was uh, you know, driving around looking at it today. I'm familiar with the property. Um, so the, the subdivision looks like it, it's included within this P1, it looks like, right? So when you're talking about the, the common property, are you talking about just where the trail comes up and up the hill until it boundaries the new subdivision? So um, the exhibit with the ordinance is the legal description for common property A and common property B. So there's two common property strips in the subdivision, which I did include the whole plat um, for your guys' reference that was final and approved. And um, it has been, it has been um, recorded to the county, so it is official. Um, but it is only common property A and B. And there's an exhibit that's within there, but all the words that are attached to the ordinance exhibit are legally describing A and B common property. Okay, so it just boundaries the subdivision then? Well, they're platted now. Common property A and B are now platted since you guys approved it. Okay. I take it this is up. It's on page 35 of your package. 35 and 36. I take it this is okay with the developer? Yes, uh, staff did get their approval before I brought this to Planning Commission. Jerry? For their support, I should say. Uh, I just wanted to ask her a question about the, the previous matter about the, uh, like the Medfield Park. Is there another planning designation that uh, would uh, be appropriate for that area other than the C1, something that would preserve the historic use of the? Um, we don't really have like a historical, uh, that may not be what you're asking, like a historic preservation um, district. We don't have any of those here. Um, but it is C1 in that area. Our, our future land use plan in the comp plan does designate this area as a neighborhood center. So it does meet our, our future land use plan that we've already adopted. Um, C1 is right in line with that. But um, other without doing an analysis, I mean, off street parking, I think it's first allowable use is C1. And so currently it's off street parking. And if you're looking at the existing use, I think C1 is the first um, zone where that's a permitted right. So. So in other words, no. I mean, off the top of my head, um, that would hard to you know, recite all of the appendix A of the zoning code for the table of uses. But um, I think C1 is probably one of the most in line areas with our future land use plan and the existing use, if that's what you're looking at. Okay. Okay, we'll move along. Uh, number D is an ordinance amending the Bella Vista zoning ordinance and map to rezone property described her in from P1 conservation district to R1 residential single family district. And this is in the Dover subdivision? Correct. This 
was proposed by the city also, was it not? That is correct. This is another one of those lots that we have found. Um, we have found quite a bit, but this one was a little bit more pressing to get it corrected. Um, we have a lot of R1 that were subdivided as a single family detached lot way back when that were somehow zoned as conservation um, with no history as to why it was zoned that way. Um, typically, you know, they're the only thing I can think of that would allow that as if it was in a, a flood zone at the time that the zoning map was made or maybe really honestly at the time the zoning map that was made, that's all I can really think of for P1 conservation of these little lots. And this is not within a flood zone. Um, it is surrounded by R1 lots. All of the lots in this subdivision are zoned as R1 except for this very lot. Um, so staff is just requesting a really a, a map cleanup and getting this R1 like the others. This reminds me a little bit of that one from the other month where it was uh, only, uh, uh, I think a resident brought that up because they wanted to build on it, mm -hmm. but it was a very similar thing. Yeah, we, we've found quite a few more too. Um, slowly getting it fixed. Yeah. Is it, is it possible? Is it possible? Um, I've been thinking about that lot in the middle of subdivisions here, there, and everywhere. Is it possible that when they created the zoning map initially, that they were thinking about a neighborhood park here, there, and everywhere around the city? If you, if you would look at those sites in a big picture basis, was it that they just arbitrarily picked a lot here that was unimproved uh, that would serve a large area that would be like a neighborhood park in the middle of, is that possible? I mean, I'm, that's the only, the only explanation I can come to that we've seen and found these things. I wouldn't say that that's what happened here because this entire subdivision, like this area is undeveloped. Um, this will be, there's a house to the east um, of this lot that'll be the first house established over there. Um, but I think that's what the intent of the common property was. I don't, I don't think, or I wouldn't say anyway from a best practice standpoint that one 0.29 acre lot would be subject, you know, maybe if, maybe if it was platted as a common area, a commonly enjoyed area of like a master plan or something like that, but I wasn't here when the map was made, unfortunately. So intent is a little difficult to allude to. That's the only, only possible explanation that I can think of. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask a question, just from kind of knowing different applications. And this, so the zoning map is a zoning map, right? And there's not anything registered with the county by the lots as being R1, R2. I mean, specifically, if I looked at my lot in the county, it's not gonna say it's zoned as R1, right? No, and that is a very common misconception that yeah. we have here because they look at Benton County and they see that the assessor has noted it as whatever the assessor thinks it is and people think that's city zoning and that is not city zoning. Benton County does not label city zoning on the assessor website or GIS. Right. So it's done on the map, right? So the program that you use, like if you want to, if you want to change that or you will potentially if we vote to do it from uh, P1 to R1, when you click on that property, does it just highlight that property when you click on it with the mouse and that's it, and you change the color that way? Yeah, we would have to change like via GIS overlay with the lot two, block three. Um, the only reason I'm asking is if somebody's doing that really quick, click, 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 they could have thought they clicked on it and they didn't, and it just could have stayed the color that it was. Potentially, right? I mean, I'm just saying it was done so fast. Well, this that's map that's referenced is actually the last adopted city council map from 2018, um, which is our mother map. That's the map that we reference heavily. We do have an online GIS working map that we've been updating, um, that we've been trying to correct. However, that has been a nine month, yeah, still nine month process, entering the 10 month, fixing all of the issues with it. Um, so we still, re like the mother map that is referenced right here is what we go off of, because that's the last document that you guys formally adopted. Um, but yeah, GIS and ArcMap or any of those, it is just a quick fix, but this one is not because this is the one that is publicized. It is a PDF document. There is no changing it. Okay. Um, so that's what we go off of. I just remember it just could be human error, right? Yeah, human error is also always a possibility. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Well, thanks very much for that. I appreciate it. Thanks. Next one is Resolution E, which is about a safety action plan and Vision Zero policy, and I believe we're pulling that, right, Jason? Be 
because it needs to go through the planning commission first. It's, it's my recommendation that, that this needs to, since it is in the nature of a comprehensive plan, even though it does use that language, it has to it also involves our street uh, construction methods and, and things that this is one of those master plans that, or excuse me, comprehensive plans that need to go to the planning commission for a public hearing and then a recommendation and then it'll eventually come to you, of course, but we need to do that. Okay. So we need to pull that. We won't have that on Monday. It, it, it would seem that uh, some of the goals in reading several of the resolutions by different cities, uh, the year varies in their goal from 2030 to 2040. And uh, it seems as though it's a pie in the sky goal of having zero deaths or serious injuries from traffic issues or traffic related things. Um, I think that's a pie in the sky goal. It certainly it's, it's, a, it's a meritorious goal, but I think it's unrealistic. It, it's certainly ambitious, yeah, especially since it's national. So <laughs> I actually think Bella Vista has a better shot at it than most of the communities <laughs> in Northwest Arkansas. Anyway, uh, let's move on to F, authorizing and levying the millage rate of ad valorem real and personal property tax for the city of Bella Vista, Arkansas for the year 2023 to be collected in 2024. And this is something we have to do and we have to inform the county uh, on or before, preferably before October 20. So that's why it's on for this month. And uh, uh, you can see outlined there in the resolution what we're proposing. It's, you know, the general fund operations, we have four mills. You're allowed to go up to five mills without a vote of uh, the electorate. And we've stayed at four. And then, of course, the police is at half a mill and the fire is at one mill. And uh, so we have to report to them what we want it to be. Now, I will, in full disclosure, last year, uh, the general fund operations was 3.79 mills, or 3.97 instead of four. And I'm going to let uh, our attorney explain why that was. So if you recall, I believe it was close to two years ago, we, we were notified of a required millage rollback pursuant to Amendment 59. Amendment 59 is very complicated, but if you recall um, what we did, the law says that after a countywide reappraisal has taken place of all of the property, that if the reappraised value would lead to a collection of more than 10% taxes compared to the prior assessment, then you have to roll back the tax rate so that you get no more than 10%. So there, there are many exceptions. One of those would be newly constructed properties and things. There are exceptions. It's very complicated. But we had to roll back the millage to 3.97 from 4 so that we didn't make more than 10% higher revenue based on the new countywide reappraisal, which had gone into effect that year. So uh, that rollback was an issue. You all approved that. Last year when you all did this, there was a discussion, if you recall, about that rollback and whether just to put it at four or 3.97 and a, a, a former member was uh, very concerned about any increase in that and so you all voted to maintain it 3.97 versus four and so the proposal you have this year is it goes back to four it basically takes that back you do have the right every year to set the rate up to five general plus the uh, millages for the pension funds which are in addition to that um, but uh, so this would go to four mils from 3.97 mils on the general. So I did want to mention that uh, since half a mil is uh, $19 a year for the average homeowner, I calculated that 0 0.03 of a mil is about a dollar twenty a year. So I, I didn't see a lot of point in being at 3.97 instead of the round number we used to be at since it's just a, a minor sum. And I did want to mention uh, the police pension fund for half a mil 
I will not be on the ballot in November. Uh, I appreciate the council being supportive of that. Uh, the county kicked it back. The state law in one place says you have to file 70 days for the election, and another place it says 90. So we weren't 90 and the county kicked it back. So we can revisit that in the spring of 2024 or 2025. If we did spring of 2024, it would go into effect the same time because you have to report October 20. So we just have to decide when's the smartest time to do that. So. Anyway, I just want to make sure everybody in council knew about that. So this will be on for next week, and we need to either do this or do something else. We need, we need to fill the county. You know, a few years ago, it was kind of famous. Cave Springs had a uh, mishap and didn't report it on time. Well, then you don't, you don't get any of it if you don't turn it in. So it's probably the most important thing for council and the mayor to remember the whole year, it says. <laughs> yeah. Our next one is G, a resolution amending the 2023 budget to appropriate 76,135.15 in capital budget unspent in 2022 related to fire suppression water line expenses for the public safety building. And I see Chief is ready to talk about this. Sure. <coughs> Excuse me, refresh everybody's memory. For the council members who were here at the time when we had the problem getting the fire suppression water here from the POA from Roger Road, dealing with Cooper, and we had a lot of uh, different exploratory things to do, reference to water. Uh, there was some extra money spent outside the bond, so my 2022 budget, this $150,000 was allotted in my 2022 budget to, to deal with those overruns and not impact the, the bond. Uh, this is a remainder that was not used as of yet, so I'd like to move that over uh, into this year so I can use it to, to basically balance things out within the bond and finish, finish paying for this water line uh, suppression, the, the, the bills as they roll in, basically. So this is basically going to make the bond whole again for money that should have been coming. It, this was a clerical error on my part as bills rolled in over the year and a half, two years, that some of them didn't come out of here like they should have. Okay, uh, and so that so I need this money uh, uh, moved over my 2023 budget to, to balance things out. A Any further questions? question in, in our bookkeeping is what this amounts to. It's bookkeeping, it's my fault. So, anything else? No. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. The next one is uh, H, Resolution H, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into a contract amendment with Kleiner Construction Management, Inc. in the amount of $367,112.40 for the interior demolition of the old police department facility and for generator equipment and furtherance of the project. And there's some uh, detail in your packet about that. And uh, I see the chief and Mark Kleinard from Kleinard Construction are both here, ready to speak. You bet. So what this um, project is here that you got in front of you is, um, is part of it is to do the um, demo of the old two-story police department. It is um, gonna be eventually become the um, central fire station living for the firefighter personnel. And um, also you'll see also on there a generator that um, because the lead time on generators is out about a year, they're saying, that um, we're also asking for the funding to go ahead and purchase that ahead of time so we'll have that generator here when the project. No, the one there is not big enough, or are you getting, or what? So, so the one there, that's, it's not big enough, it's 100KW, we're gonna need at least a 300KW, because when it's all said and done with, that generator is gonna run the whole, whole city complex. That's correct, so we have everything on generator power. The old generator that's sitting there is gonna to move to station two. We're gonna repurpose it to the fire station on the east side to get all, because I want all of my fire stations on full generated power. That's the only, only station other than station one in which that's gonna change once this happens is that's the only fire station I have that's not operated on full generated power when we lose power. So it's very, as emergency manager, I think that's important to have our fire stations running on complete power. So we're gonna repurpose that, the old generator, which is still in good shape, we're going to repurpose it out to the um, east side fire station for that purpose. So that's why it's all tied together. Generally, this would be done all as one deal, but 
with um, this project, not knowing what's behind this project or behind the walls, we have to get in there to see it before we can move forward with any, any GMPs on the project. So, so you, this is, uh, I guess you'd characterize this as phase 1A of the project? That's, that's yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. assuming for demo, for the demolition. Yeah. Okay. He, he made it kind of all encompassing. It's not demolishing the building. It's just oh, yeah, it's the inside. Interior. interior. Selective demolition. <laughs> yeah, going down to the walls and seeing what you have. There's always, always some surprises there. We don't like surprises. So. Uh, we'd have to do this at, at some point in time anyway. We're just getting a little bit of a jump on it so that we've got better information so that the working drawings are developed with whatever we might find that needs to be. I imagine Wozniak knows the answer to this, but what year was that part of the building built? Early 90s. Hey, 85. And the only, you know, when we remodeled it, of course, I did, I did that. But uh, the only thing they told us, and that was from whoever put the building up, we couldn't take any interior walls down on the first floor because it wasn't built to support. You know, if we took one down, not, it was true or not, but that's what they told us. You know, don't move any interior walls on the first floor because it's going to mess up your next floor. Yeah, so we've, um, we've kind of identified those supporting, uh, that supporting structure within the um, building. Now, I think we're going to be good on the majority of it. Some, the right side of it we can't, the left side we're able to, I believe, on it. So that's basically what this, this particular proposal is for. Um, you can... On the takeoff sheet, you can kind of look down and see where we're at on that. The demolition was actually pretty, was cheaper than I thought it'd be, actually. The, the, the generator portion of this is actually more than just the generator. It's a, a new automatic transfer switch and new main switch gear for the whole complex, which is to take care of pretty much anything that we're planning on and maybe a couple of things. So we're going to try to maximize the square footage of things that we put in there. So how much of the how much of this three hundred and sixty-seven thousand is for the generator? Uh, one hundred and eighty. One hundred eighty thousand. About half. Yeah. It's about half. Okay, I see. Yeah, I see the number here now. And thirty thousand is for the switch gear. So. Well, yeah, that's so the, the, the auto transfer mm -hmm. switch is a part of the generator. Yes. Yes, it is. It, they, they come as a package, generally. I've never bought them separately. Usually they come as a pair, the generator and the automatic transfer so that they talk, talk to one another. But we're also uh, getting in line for switching here, which on the side switch here we're needing. The supply chain right now is terrible. I mean, it's, we're going to try to, and, and even if we get something sooner, We'll be better off to buy it sooner rather than later, and we have places we can start. Yeah. Right there on the side. It's designed, set outside, so it's not perfect. We protect it. Yeah, I was surprised when I met with you and our, our other building experts that the, how bad the supply chain still is. You know, you think that's something you're going to get over, COVID's done, but it, it is amazingly bad for a lot of different things. Yeah, it's hard to get certain certain items yeah. right now. So, yeah. Yeah, and this 367000 that's already part of the, uh, what was approved in the capital budget. That's correct. So, it's, in, it's currently in the um, capital budget yeah. right now. We spent out of that maybe a couple hundred thousand so far on that project. So, and what was it, 2.1 2. 2. 1 million? million yeah. Is what was in capital this year. Right. Oh, Larry. A question for you. The main switch gear, I'm assuming there are like three pods there, the, the city hall pod, the fire station pod in the middle, which is the building and the, and the vehicle storage, and then you've got the police department building. I'm assuming those are individually serviced in terms of electric provision for those buildings. Is that? Not right? necessarily. Huh? That whole <laughs> complex. <laughs> the whole complex is on one one power source comes in. So, so this switch gear that you're looking at here for thirty thousand, 
that would be upgrading the switch gear that would service the whole site. That's correct. And that's all on the east end of that, the police building. Right. That's correct. Okay. That main switch gear dates back to the original construction. Okay. So it's going on 40 some years. So this will upgrade the capacity for what you expect yes. to need uh, yes. ultimately right. for that whole site once it's redeveloped down the road? We can't even buy parts for that switch gear that's in there. So if a, if a Beings that it's serving the entire complex. If a breaker or at risk, or something, we'd be in trouble. So we're at risk. We just didn't feel like that's a chance we wanted to take. Yeah, there's one meter down there to serve that okay. property. It all comes in one area right there on the okay. corner. So this will be enough to service the ultimate development of the site, including the new police station rebuild that's that correct. we're talking about. Right? The whole idea is to get, once all this renovation's done, is to get every body that's there, every building that's in that complex on generated power. We lose power, we still, we still operate. But I know there's some future plans for, city, for, the, for the area that the city hall has in terms of the ultimate fire station development there. That's the ultimate And so uh, this will have capacity for that ultimate development. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Right. And those, those are, some of those plans are in the, in the process right now. Yeah. Okay. So. Thank you. You'll see it later, in a later date, or in the future. So. When do you think we'll see a GMP for that phase one, that timing wise? The architects and engineers are working diligently on getting that to a point where we can get it out for bids. Um, I'm hopeful that, as you probably know, we're working through some possible changes to the addition. Uh, that makes us up a little bit. We're really hoping to get out by business first phase one and two, which would be the two story plus the addition by the end of the year. Get started on the first year. Okay. Sooner if we if can. If not sooner. If yeah. Sooner if we can. <laughs> yeah. But That's this, the thing. But doing this demo now, getting that finished up will help us be able to hit the ground running when, when we do get bids in. Yeah, you have to do that first anyway, so. So the new, the new, the new set of plans and the new idea, if it's approved by the mayor, once we get that, get that through the architect, is um, hopefully we're going to get that on the agenda or, or submit it by October 2nd to get it on a November 13th, I believe it's the 13th, um, planning commission agenda. So that's, that's the plan for that. Okay. Any more questions? I guess we're all set. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's see. Next one's an amendment amending the 2023 budget to reallocate 13600 in capital budget savings to apply to the purchase of a Chevrolet pickup truck for the de fire department. Okay. So this uh, pickup truck has already been purchased. Um, as I stated in the resolution here um, below, what resolution it was, um, we, we didn't know it was going to be over budget when we actually went out for bid, when we actually done the, the budget items for um, 23 budget, because every, everything shot up, all the vehicles shot up. We knew it was going to be over budget, but we didn't know it was going to be exactly, you know, the $5,000 over budget. So I was, I was diligently thinking about ways I could save money in my capital, and so I saved capital in a couple of projects to help move towards this to cover the extra cost of striping, lighting, and the extra cost of the vehicle, this moves some capital funds over to that account, or over to that, that vehicle, which it's already capital anyhow, because everything goes on that vehicle's capital. And I just was kind of just moving some money around, staying within the capital budget. All so this that. was from the fire training tower project, the no, extra? Or? No, the extra come from uh, self-contained breathing apparatuses. We um, saved some funding there, a little over 5,000 on that, on that project. And we saved, um, let's see, what was the other one? We saved a little over $8,000 8, on some extrication equipment we purchased. We budgeted $35,000 and come in like $28,000, $27,000, somewhere around there. So I, I knew I was kind of looking at that anyhow because I knew I was probably going to be over budget. I just didn't know exactly how much we we're going to be over budget, and I didn't know exactly how much the lights and, and I'm striping and all that stuff is going to cost. So I'm just kind of allocating, switching some money around on there. Same within the capital budget. Any questions? 
Okay? Uh, I think that's it, unless somebody has something else. Larry, do you have something? I have a question. Do we need to add to the agenda a resolution in support of the bike route uh, USB R51? I think there was some emails floating around that was saying that we needed, we only covered one of them in the last resolution that we did. And this one is uh, on paved roads. The other one was, I think, on paved and unpaved. Yeah, the trails manager had said something about that, hadn't they? Yeah, so I'm, I'm wondering, we may want to check with him and see if we need to have that resolution, because it seemed like the email from him was kind of urgent that we needed to get it done. So if we do, uh, I would encourage us to add that to the agenda. Please. Uh, yeah, I recall that. Hey, now that you've mentioned it, he, he uh, Justin said they didn't really uh, need a resolution, just a letter of support, something like that. Yeah. So, so did the letter satisfy that need then, or it did? So we don't need a resolution. Okay. All right. I stand corrected. Oh, that's okay. Thanks for bringing it up. So. Okay. Um, that's everything, I think, so we're adjourned. We'll see you next Monday at 6.30. Thank you.